if, if you were to ask somebody outside of here, they'd say, oh, hack it, tweed jacket, corduroy trousers, chalk striped suit, morning coat, dinner jacket. It, it's again, it's, it's the men's uniform, really, but done, done well, done with a good cut and good cloth, not skimping on it, doing it properly. And, and looking, when, in, as I, when I started, I found that a lot of the customers who came to me were the sons of guys who, uh, their, their, their fathers were having suits made uh, by their tailors, and these guys couldn't afford it. So Hackett was the next step, really, where we produced clothes that had a bespoke look about them, had a good English feel, but were affordable. So these guys were stepping into that sort of look, rather than as they were unable to go to the tailors, really. There, there was a gap in the market when we started in the early 80s when a lot of the British men's brands had gone astray and they'd lost, lost their point of view and they'd traded down or they tried to be cool and fashionable and they were missing it. And I think we went the opposite way, probably completely out of step with whatever was going on and just did what we wanted to do and that was to sell good English proper clothes. I think Britishness generally was quite low on people's agenda and I think Hackett was an exception um, but now more and more people are celebrating Britishness and I think the reticence in the past was that it tended to become seen as being nationalistic and I, you know like flag waving and jingoistic and all those sort of things um, but now I think there seems to be we seem to be accepting our Britishness we're not so concerned about empire and everything and, uh, and all I'm interested in is selling British clothes, really. I, um, I was in, went to Paris for the weekend and I went to Cleoncourt Market and I bumped into a guy there who was selling incredibly English clothes secondhand. Burberry Max, Aquascoot and raincoats, tweed suits, tweed jackets. And we just started talking and he said, I come to London once a month and buy, go around the markets and buy stuff. He said, it'd be great if you did it for me and then I'll just come and buy it all from you. So um, he did, and I went to the markets, bought all this stuff, sold it directly to him. I did it for about a year, and then I thought, well, maybe I should sell it myself rather than selling it to you know, cut him out. And, and so I opened the little shop at the New King's Road and um, started selling second-hand clothes. But the thing about it was that everything that I put into the shop was very considered and chosen. It was good quality, bespoke suits, a lot of Savile Row suits handmade tweed jackets, everything in good order and um, everything cleaned, repaired, sized, laid out as though you're walking into a gentleman's shop. So it wasn't like walking into Oxfam or something. And we really had done all the choice for the customer. So the customer would come in and say, I need a tweed jacket. And, so, you know. and then most people felt like they were walking into like a Savile Row shop. It's extraordinary, really. Well, I always think is, is to keep it simple and invest in good cloth and, and not, not to try and look for something that is obviously a fashion statement. I say that here, I am wearing this multi-stripe suit, but, you know, it just buy the best you can afford, make sure it's cut properly, make sure the cloth is good and wear decent shoes and a good tie and shirt, you know. It's, is, is pulling it all together really. It isn't just having a good suit. It's making sure because so many men they'll buy a good suit and then they'll go out and buy a pair of cheap shoes. It ruins the whole thing. So it's invest in your shoes, invest in a good silk tie and a and a good cotton shirt, double cuff. I do have a weakness for good shoes, so, and and for me that and there's not so much a luxury, but I just like the the real craftsmanship that goes into having a pair of shoes made and how beautiful they look and how long they last and um, that to me is real luxury. It's about rarity and craftsmanship. You know, I think that quite often the word is used too glibly. Luxury. Everything's luxury. You know, somebody puts up a, a mediocre block of flats in, you know, back end of town and they have luxury apartments for sale. You know, it's just not true, really. So I think uh, it's about scarcity and you know, hard to get hold of and something that you cherish.